Hi everybody, it's Nell. <laughs> I am here, I am back. It is, what is today? I'm looking at my calendar. Today is Monday, October 9th, and I am finally back from a couple month hiatus, I guess, um, for a floss tube video. I'm just gonna update you on life and stitching and what I've been working on and what I finished, and uh, we're gonna chat. So last time I talked to you guys was in July, I'm pretty sure, so it's been a while. And uh, I, I did say in my last video that it would probably be a few months because we moved. You can probably tell I'm in a different place. We uh, didn't move far, we moved across town. We're still in the same town that we were, um, but we moved to a bigger house. Um, for a couple of reasons. We're getting close to finishing up medical school and my husband is going to be doing his residency here. So we knew that we were gonna be here an additional four years. And so we decided, okay, if we're gonna be here for four more years, we need a little bit bigger place. Um, we need, well, we would like to be in a place that has a backyard that my kids can play in because the last house we were in, the backyard was not really kid friendly and so, we wanted a house with a with a backyard and a couple other things, so we did. We found a new place. We love it so far. Um, we are in a really nice neighborhood with lots of little kids, and it's a really like quaint neighborhood. They are very neighborhood ish. They get together for every major holiday. Sorry, the sun just went behind clouds. It got really dim. Um, they get together for every major holiday and have parades and festivals and it's a really fun place to live. So we are liking it so far. Uh, one of the big reasons we moved and needed a bigger place is if you follow me on Instagram or if you're a friend on Facebook then you already know this. But a big reason also why I've, why I've been gone for so long is I'll show you. Oh boy. Dun, da, da. There it is. That's baby number three. <laughs> we are expecting, we're expecting our third child. Um, he or she, we don't know yet, will be born in the spring. And this one um, was intentional. We were, we were hoping to get pregnant and we're really excited, but we knew with our third, we couldn't make that tiny little house, that little yellow house that inspired my channel name. We just couldn't make it work for much longer. And so thank you to all of you who've reached out and offered congratulations. And also those of you who've reached out to say, hey, I miss you. I hope you are you know, feeling up to filming soon. Thank you for your patience, but we are really excited. Um, one consequence of being pregnant is that I have not done a ton of stitching in the last few months. I um, had mild to moderate morning sickness um, for the first three months and I really have no place to complain. I know there are women out there who are sick all nine months and have horrible morning sickness where they can't keep anything down. That is not my experience. Mine, I've been blessed and fortunate that my morning sickness is very manageable. Um, but it does make me feel kind of gross and exhausted all the time and I just didn't feel like stitching. I didn't feel like stitching, I didn't feel like watching videos about stitching and so I am really, really out of the loop with the cross stitch world. Um, I've just started getting back into watching floss tube again and it's fun to kind of get caught up but man I missed a lot in those three months and so um, yeah. So that's exciting. Uh, what else has happened? We moved, I'm expecting. My oldest son started preschool this year, which has been a really good experience for him. He loves it. He's a super social, independent little kid, always has been. And so I wasn't sure about starting um, preschool at three and a half. Um, there was part of me that wanted to wait till next year, but he loves it. And it was clearly the right decision because he just is blooming and just loving, loving, loving it. So he goes to preschool um, Monday through Thursday in the mornings for three hours. So gives me a little bit of a break and my younger son and I get to spend some time together, which is nice, especially now that there's gonna be another one joining our family. So I've enjoyed getting to spend a little one-on-one -on -one time with my current baby. Um, but yeah, it's been a good, it's been a good, very busy summer. Um, let's see what else. 
I think that's kind of it. Oh, no, um, two other things. First, uh, my grandfather passed away in September, about a month ago. Um, this is the grandfather that I've mentioned before here on um, YouTube. This is a grandfather who's a World War II veteran and who loved turtles, and I have my little turtle needle minder. Um, I was very close to my grandfather, and he passed away. Um, it was expected. It was not unanticipated. He had been very sick for a long time, and we knew it was coming. And so while it was sad, it was nice that it wasn't a surprise. Uh, my mom was really blessed that she got to be there uh, with her family when he passed. So she got to see her dad and, and talk to him before he passed away. She was there with her mom and all of her siblings when he passed away. So that was a blessing. And my husband and I got to fly out to California for his funeral um, two weeks ago, which was also an unexpected blessing. We didn't think there was any way he'd be able to get the time off from school, and there was no way we could afford flying from Missouri to California, but just providence provided, and uh, we got to go, and I'm just really grateful that we got to be there. It was a wonderful experience to be there with my, my family, and especially with my grandma, and uh, we are, a, I think I've mentioned, but we are a family of faith. And um, so for us, this is temporary. We will see him again, but it's always hard to say goodbye to someone you love. So um, that happened. And then, as if life wasn't crazy enough, I auditioned for a local production of an opera, and I was cast. I'm going to be singing in an opera in December. Um, this is a premiere work um, by a local composer. He's, he was the conductor of the Missouri Symphony for many, many years, and this is a piece that he composed. It is a, um, a retelling of A Christmas Carol, but set in 1920s New York City. So instead of Victorian England, we're talking Jazz Age New York, um, and it's a retelling of A Christmas Carol. And so I play the niece of um, the Scrooge character, and so I will be singing in my very first opera. Um, I was in a few operas as a young child, as an extra. I didn't sing. They always need children for some of their productions, and I got to be an extra in a few operas with a, a traveling Italian company, but this is my first time singing in an opera, so this is a new experience, and it's it's been fun so far. So. That goes up in December and is keeping me busy musically. Um, but yeah, so there you go. There's about eight minutes. Quick life update. Thanks for being patient while I got all my stuff together to film. But let's talk about stitching because that's why we're here. Um, first of all, finishes. Surprisingly, I do have some finishes to show you. Um, not anything huge, but significant considering that I have felt terrible for three months and haven't felt much like stitching. And so I have a few small finishes to show you. The first two, let me get them out, are I was working um, some more on my Advent Animals. My Brooks Books, sorry, I keep shaking the table. Uh, my Brooks Books Advent Animals and I finished the next two in the series. And so this is number 18, which is Remy Rabbit. Oh, he's just so cute. Love that little stocking. And then, and I haven't ironed them yet, so they still have hoop marks. And then I finished number 19, which is Larry Lyon, who my husband asked me this, and so I clarified for him, and I realized that if you're American, this is not necessarily common knowledge. I think a lot of Americans know, but um, my husband didn't, and he's like, is he standing on candy? What is he standing on? He is standing on Christmas crackers. They are, I believe, and British stitchers, you can correct me if I'm wrong, this is kind of a UK tradition, it's a British thing, that on Christmas you crack open these Christmas crackers, they're like big poppers, and toys and jokes and these little paper crowns come flying out. And so he's wearing all these paper crowns um, and standing on a pile of Christmas crackers. So that's what that is. It kind of looks like candies, like Tootsie Rolls or something, but... Um, which there's an American candy for you, but uh, no, they are Christmas crackers. So I finished those two, 
And then um, I had a finish. This one I may have shown you before I took a little break. So if I have, I apologize. If not, then here you go. I finished the third in the series of my Brooks books, Little Women. I finished Jo March. Here she is in the blue. So that's Jo. So Beth was the first one I stitched in the purple and then Amy in the pink and then now I've done Jo. And you can see I've made a start on Meg who's in um, a kind of peachy pink ball gown, I believe inspired by the movie um, from the 90s. I think that's the color dress she wears in the movie. But yeah, love it. My little women are not far from being finished. So I have no idea what I'm going to do with this because, you know, ideally I would have a daughter to hang it in her room, but so far I only have sons. And we don't know what number three is yet. We should know in about a month. Um, but my instincts are telling me it's another boy. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with that little women. I might just end up framing it and hanging it in my office or my sewing room if I never have a little girl to hang it in her room. But that's all right. And then my last finish, which this is another small finish. It's a partial finish. And I was really proud of this one. Oh, there's my turtle needle minder. That reminds me of my grandpa who passed. Um, I'm gonna have to pull this off the cue snap at least one side. I finished the first block of um, Autumn and Hawker and Hollow. So let me show you. And I'm not gonna pull it all the way off because you guys have seen the top border piece, but there's the first block. It says the skies are low, the winds are slow. And I just love that black cat and all of the pumpkins sitting on the bottom of the frame. So first block of Hawker and Hollow is done. Um, you can see I just barely started working on the border for the second frame that will go here. Um, I haven't worked on it much since I finished that block because I've been focusing on a different whip. Um, but yeah, so, you know, not too shabby, considering I didn't really cross-stitch much in the last few months. That's really not too bad. I had four kind of small finishes. Nothing major, nothing, no giant projects were finished, but, oh, I forgot to put my turtle back on. Yeah, that's my turtle needle minder in memory of my grandpa. Um, and I got that from Julie Connell at Nifty Needle Nannies, and I believe she still has some. It's got a piece of abalone shell in the center. It was great. When uh, I went for my grandpa's funeral, I was looking for a piece of jewelry I could wear. And I found at Charming Charlie's, I found a turtle necklace. It's beautiful, a long gold chain. And then at the bottom, it had a medallion of a turtle about this big and the pieces of the shell moved individually. And it's just really pretty. So I got to wear a turtle necklace to my grandpa's funeral, which was kind of nice. So there are my finishes. And also, two of my whips, you saw Little Women, Meg is a current work in progress, and then Hawker and Hollow is also a current work in progress. I haven't started um, any more Brooks Books Advent Animals, but I do intend to. I don't know if they'll be finished this year. I'm not gonna really push myself to finish them, but now I only have six left. I've done 19, and I have six to go, so woohoo. Um, let me show you my other whips. Um, nothing major. Like I said, I really haven't spent a whole lot of time stitching in the last three months. But the one thing that I did, I have been working on, particularly in the last like two weeks, um, as I've kind of gotten back more into the swing of things. Sorry, I'm taking it off the cues now. Not totally, but I pulled out, um, something I started briefly, which was a newer chart for me. This is Magic Potion by Sandra Cozzolino. I just wanted to work on Halloween themed stuff and I just think this is the cutest ever. Um, and so I've been working on it and I've made some pretty significant progress. So, sorry, there are windows everywhere behind me and I'm just, just not sure where is the best place to film in this new house. So I'll figure it out eventually, but I apologize for the glare behind through the fabric. But you can see I finished the top half 
all the words and all those little bats, which are just so cute. And then I've started on these witches, who again, I love their fashion sense. And uh, I've got my Hocus Pocus needle minder and my Ron Weasley needle minder. This one is from um, Minding My Minders, I think. She doesn't, she doesn't manufacture them anymore. It's a bottle cap needle minder. And this Ron Weasley one is from Lindy Stitches, Stephanie. Um, I don't think she does needle minders anymore, but when she did, I bought that one. So anyway, there is a magic potion. And in case you're wondering, it says, croaking frogs, leaping lizards, pumpkin seeds, smelly gizzards, cawing ravens, eye of newt, magic potion, or chicken soup. And then the witches. And so you can see this bottom checked border here is the last of like the main chart. And then underneath it just says happy Halloween in like a little frame. So I still have a ways to go on that and I'm not gonna kill myself trying to finish it before Halloween this year. Um, but I just wanted to work on something sort of Halloween-y, so I did. So there's that. Ooh, stuff is falling. Well, we'll figure it out later. Um, next, whip. Oh, yeah. Another Halloween one. This is the Prairie Schooler Knock Knock. Been working on that one, and not going to take it out of the cue snap, but... I will show you. I've made some, oh, oh no. Pfft. Hold on guys. The needle minder fell off and went flying. Okay. So last time you saw it, I had kind of just worked on this side border and a little tiny bit of the house. And so I've made some really great progress on the house. This one is a really easy stitch. It's mostly all one color. Occasionally I do bring in the orange, but it's mostly all 3371. Um, and I'm stitching it three over two on 25 count Lugana. So the X's are big, it's easy to see. This is a great one for when I just don't really wanna think very hard and I just wanna do some stitching. And so put in a little more work on Knock Knock. And then, I really need a better system for like putting things places in this new spot. What is this? I think that might be it. Yeah, because next is just more Brooks Books Advent Animals, which I haven't started anymore. That's in my last project bag. Let me just double check my notes. Um, we talked about Autumn at Hawker and Hollow, Little Women, Prairie Schooler. Yep, that's it. Those are all my whips. So that's it guys, I tell you, I didn't have that much to show you. Um, I do have a little bit of haul that I will show you. Um, the main haul came from, I took a trip in August to Las Vegas, which um, if you are local to Las Vegas, our hearts are with you. I could not believe what happened last week and uh, I just don't know when enough is going to be enough, but that's... <laughs> That's another story. That's that's not for floss tube. Anyway, hearts are with you. Our love and our prayers and our support go to you. I wish I could donate blood, but they won't let me right now because I'm pregnant. But we are sending what support we can um, through local charities, and I do have lots of friends and family out that direction. So anyway, before that happened, my mom and my sisters and I took a vacation to... Um, Las Vegas just for four days and it was just purely a relaxation vacation. We didn't make any big plans. Um, we went to go see one show. Uh, we drove about an hour and a half north up to Tuacon Theater in St. George, Utah to see, which is the big regional outdoor theater up there, to see Newsies, which was amazing. But other than that, we really didn't have any specific plans. We just laid by the pool and Drink fancy drinks. I had virgin pina coladas and virgin strawberry daiquiris and it was delicious and really relaxing and I got a tan and it was wonderful. But the first day I was there before the rest of the family came into town, I got to go to Stitcher's Paradise. And this bag's all wrinkled because I've been waiting to show you this for two months now and I finally get to do it. It's not really anything terribly exciting, 
but it was exciting for me. Um, I picked up what was, at the time, the most recent chart from the Early American series, which is Freedom. Uh, two more have come out since then, <laughs> but I bought this one while I was there. And I also bought, while I was there, and I put them on a ring. They did not come on a ring, but I put them on a ring to keep them organized. I bought all of my threads, they're all classic Colorworks threads, um, to do my Early Americans series. Um, I've now got five of the nine charts, and I will be getting the rest of them. And she has on her website a anticipated floss usage um, suggestion. She lists all the flosses that are used in the series and about how much you're going to need um, if you stitch them as recommended. I will be stitching it on 32 count and not um, 30 count. And so I just used my best guess um, for how much I would need, but I bought all the flosses while I was at Stitcher's Paradise. I love this gold. What is this gold? Ye old gold is what that is. So that is what I got while I was in Vegas. Nothing terribly exciting, but it was fun for me to shop. I really liked Stitcher's Paradise. It's a small shop. Um, a small, well-stocked shop, I should qualify that. It's not a huge store, but they are well-stocked and the best place in that whole shop is the fabric room. They have a whole little room off to the side that's their fabric room and they have in these little bins on the bottom shelves on one side are all of their little like offcuts, small pieces for ornaments and small projects and they're discounted and I probably spent 20 minutes just going through those <laughs> fabric bins. I didn't end up buying anything because I didn't really have anything in mind when I was there. I didn't, I should have planned better, but um, I just, I didn't go anticipating buying any fabric and so there were so many little small cuts that I was sorely tempted to buy, but I did not because I was trying to be sensible. And uh, yeah, so that was my trip to Stitcher's Paradise. Loved it. If you're ever in Las Vegas, it's not far from the Strip. It's maybe a five to ten minute drive off the Strip. And it was great. It was really, really fun. Um, the last thing I want to show you is not really haul. This was an unexpected, very kind gesture that once again made me the biggest Zweigart fabric fan of all time. So here's the story. <laughs> I was looking at a couple of my pieces that I wanted to start in the next year or so. One of which is Early Americans and you know I have some other pieces that I'm slowly collecting bits as I can you know as I have the budget to do so and I was starting to think about fabric and I went on 123 Stitch and I went on the Fabric Viewer and I just was feeling frustrated because it's really really hard to tell from a tiny little picture on the internet what that fabric looks like. And a lot of times there are fabrics that seem to look very similar. Like what's the difference between ivory and cream? Someone tell me. Like it's really hard to tell. And I had a thought. Um, you guys know I prefer Zweigart um, fabrics, just that's my preference. There's nothing wrong with any other brand. I use other brands, but I prefer them. And I thought, I wonder if they have like a little swatch card of their different fabric colors. I wonder if they have a swatch card and I wonder if they'd send me one. If I paid, you know, paid for it and paid shipping, if they'd send me a swatch card. So I went on Zweigart's website, look, clicked around, couldn't find anything. They don't have anything listed for sale. No, you know, they, they give you the numbers and the places you can call in your country that distribute um, Zweigart fabric. And here in the United States, Yarn Tree is a big one. Um, there's a couple of them, but anyway, nothing about swatch cards or anything. So I thought, well, you know what? It never hurts to ask, right? The worst they can do is say no. So I sent them an email. They have a little customer service email and I said, hi, I'm nobody important. I'm just a stitcher that really likes your fabrics. And I was curious if you have available any sort of little swatch card for say your 32 count linen, which is my favorite count of linen to work on, um, that you could send me so I can look at colors. 
and I got about two days later I got a very kind email back from a woman in Germany at their headquarters saying um, you know thank you for your interest thank you for your inquiry I'm going to refer you to some local distributors in your country and she just sent me the the information for the yarn tree and the other places that are wholesale Zweigart distributors in the US and that was it didn't say anything she didn't say no but she also didn't say sure we can send you one she just kind of referred me to these other stores and I thought all right well they must not and I would have to contact one of those stores and I'm just not gonna bother it's not that big a deal right <laughs> about a week and a half later got a knock on the door and it's the FedEx guy and he has an, a package for me priority international I'm like who sent me something priority international I got this in the mail. Zweigart, without telling me they were going to do this, sent me their full catalog. Plus some. And I'm going to show you. So this is Zweigart's full catalog. Okay, This has everything that they currently manufacture as far as linens and textiles. Okay, And uh, it's written in um, German, English, French, Spanish, and Russian for your convenience and they talk about the orange line and their selvage and all of that but anyway they go through and actually well this is the table of contents they go through by type of linen i keep shaking the table guys i'm so sorry so they have their ada they have their linen their even weave their canvas their fabrics for free embroidery so really really fine linens for freehand embroidery um pre-cuts fabric pieces table linens Eyelet doilies for crochet. If you like to crochet lace, they make the like center cotton round like pieces that you then crochet the edging onto. Um, bands, like stitching bands, you know, bands of Ada or even weave or whatever. Lace edgings, needlework and crochet ideas, patchwork. They do actually manufacture um, some quilting fabric. Um, couture, living and their, their address. And this is their complete catalog. And so just as an example, I'm gonna take you to their um, 32 count Belfast linen page, which has all the colors that are currently being manufactured by Zweigart in their 32 count linen size. And uh, it's tricky because there are no color names, there are just numbers. And so you have to kind of do some research and I did find um, the listing of all the names. I had to go to a couple of those big distributors like Yarn Tree and stuff. They do list the numbers along with the names so you can find out what they're called. Because at 123 Stitch, they don't list the Zweigart um, item number. So you just have to know what the color is. But I mean, look at how many different off-whites they have. And I was really like, oh, and there's a few more over here. <laughs> I'm like, it's a good thing that uh, I know what those color names are because they're all different. They're all subtly different, but they're all off whites. So that was super sweet of them. They sent me this full catalog, which I spent a good hour looking at. Yeah, their lace edgings are beautiful. Look at this. We have all this like, yeah, anyway. So that was really lovely. And then on top of that, again, unbeknownst to me, they sent me swatch cards. As requested, this is their current line of 32 count Belfast linen. They have a little sample up here of what their Belfast linen looks like and what it feels like. And then these are all actual little circles cut out of every color that Zweigart currently manufactures in their 32 count linen. <laughs> I'm like a nobody. Oh, up here, these four are their opalescent, you can see sparkly they have four different opalescent colors that are currently being manufactured I'm like a nobody I don't sell stuff I'm not a shop owner and this lady just she didn't even say anything about it in that email she sent me she never like intimated that she was going to send me anything and then here's the other swatch card so this has the petite point um, linens that have the polka dots and this is their vintage line so you know I know a lot of you are a big fan of Zweigart's um, vintage country mocha that's right there they actually have other ones as well this green one is no longer being manufactured so they crossed it off 
um, cause that one is, I guess since this swatch card was made, that one has been discontinued, but you can still find this fabric um, at some of those big distributors in the US. If they still have it, you can still buy it along with a lot of other discontinued Zweigart fabrics. But this is their current lineup. And <laughs> just for the heck of it, they didn't charge me a cent. They sent this Priority International FedEx and didn't charge me a darn thing. They didn't even tell me they were sending it. So guys, once again, I will always and forever be a loyal Zweigart fabric girl. And can we just talk about the customer service there? Like this random woman in the United States, not a shop owner, no one important, just says, hey, do you have a swatch card that I can buy from you? And they just sent it to me <laughs> along with their full catalog. Um, so I was really touched and thrilled to have that. I mean, that's really nice for me. Now I can look at those little swatches of linen and make an educated and informed decision on what color fabric I want to order. And yeah, how great is that? So anyway, that was um, kind of fun and really exciting. Um, I don't think I have Anything else for you? Sorry, I was just looking at my notes. I don't have anything else for you. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all enjoying your stitching. Thank you to all of you who've reached out in the last few months or who have reached out um, since I announced the pregnancy and we are getting close to being halfway there, which is great. That's always exciting. So we will, in the next few weeks, be finding out. We'll go in for our halfway point um, ultrasound where they do the anatomy scan and make sure everything's looking good and we'll find out what we're having. So, I don't know, I my instinct tells me it's a boy, but I could be wrong, we could have a girl, I don't know. A girl would be a new experience, I only have boys. So, <laughs> um, thank you all for watching, thank you for um, being interested in my stitching and for being so supportive and wonderful and I will talk to you guys hopefully in not three months um, but hopefully sometime next month and I will see you then okay bye